Hey, good morning everyone, TJ here. We're out at Mammoth Mountain doing a free ride test with Snowboard Mag, and today we're checking out the Burton Hometown Hero. I'm gonna go through all the tech you're gonna find in this board. I'll share some feedback on how it's feeling out here. And if you wanna read even more about it, you can click the link down in the description below to check out the feature on snowboardmag.com. Let's get into it. All right, for reference, before we jump into the tech, I'm five foot 10, I weigh around 150 pounds, and I rode this snowboard in a 152. So the Hometown Hero is gonna be a free ride and all mountain focused snowboard on the Burton lineup. Gonna be a solid choice for powder days as well. It's gonna have a directional design, so you're gonna find a directional outline in this one with a noticeably longer nose than tail outside the contact points, giving it more surface area up front. You're also gonna find 12 millimeters of taper, so the tail is gonna be a little bit narrower than the nose, reducing the surface area in the back of the snowboard, as well as a 40 millimeter stance setback. So the reference stance is shifted much closer to the tail, naturally keeping your weight further back on this one. You're also gonna get a directional camber profile. It's what I like to call a shifted camber. It is camber dominant, and you're gonna find positive camber from your front foot going all the way out to the tail of the snowboard with reverse camber going outside your front foot out into the nose. So this camber profile plus all the other directional features in the design I mentioned are all gonna work together to help this board out in soft snow. You're gonna find carbon built into the layup of this snowboard, which is gonna help offer more energy and a more snappy feel without really increasing the overall weight of the board as well as Burton's channel system. So that's gonna give you unlimited stance width options and is compatible with pretty much all major bindings. Other than that, you're also gonna get a centered base, which is a higher end base material known to be harder, faster, and more durable compared to an extruded base. But you do wanna make sure to wax it regularly to maintain a nice fast glide out there. And that's gonna be it for a quick tech breakdown. Let's get into how this snowboard feels out on the mountain. start off talking about the flex. So for me at just over 150 pounds riding the 152, I'd say it's a pretty solid mid flex or maybe even a little bit on the stiffer side of medium. It's gonna have a torsional flex to match. So it's got a pretty sturdy feel overall. It's gonna offer some nice stability and it's gonna stand up to a more aggressive riding style as well. I do want to mention that with that shifted camber and the directional shape, if you're trying to get flex out of the snowboard, you are going to have a little bit more leverage up front. It's going to be a little bit more friendly to get presses leaning into the nose of the snowboard. But overall, it's not going to be the most butter friendly snowboard. Still within the realm of possibilities, you can have a good time doing that kind of stuff, but it's going to make you work for it a little bit more. And it does have a fairly precise feel to it as well. So I would definitely suggest paying close attention to your edges if you're doing that kind of stuff. But it is gonna come through with a nice energetic feel. It's gonna offer some nice pop on the exit of those flat ground tricks. And is actually a lot of fun for doing more freestyle focused stuff as well. If you're trying to get out there to find natural features or even take this board through some park laps. I also wanna talk about the carving experience on the Hometown Hero. And there's two specs I wanna highlight. First is the waist width. So at a 152, you're gonna find a 248 millimeter waist, which is a little bit narrow. So something to pay attention to if you're really trying to lean the board over or if you have a larger boot size. You're also gonna find a 7.2 meter side cut, which is a little bit tight, but still gonna be a very versatile side cut, gonna have a pretty comfortable feel at a wide variety of speeds, even at slow speeds. And as far as the overall feel as you're out there exploring the resort, I'd say it's gonna be stable. It's gonna have a pretty powerful feel to it as well. It's gonna stay confident as you get it up to higher speeds and you start to push the snowboard and also be able to power through more chundery chopped up conditions and keep you in control. With that narrower waist, it's gonna be quick and responsive edge to edge. You're not really gonna be finding much chatter in this one, even as you push it and start to get it up to those faster speeds. And even though it is pretty stable, it's gonna have a pretty powerful feel to it. It's gonna stand up to more aggressive riding. If you have some experience under your belt, I still think it does have a pretty manageable feel overall and is pretty easy to maneuver out there. And I didn't take this board out on a super deep day, but I did get it in some soft snow. And I'd say with all the directional features, uh, especially that significant setback that shortens the tail up quite a bit, it's gonna float really well. You know, it's definitely gonna offer a nice benefit in soft snow. And with that shorter tail, it does feel nice and maneuverable. If you're riding it at the reference stance, it's gonna be quick and easy to kick that tail out and spray some snow up in any powder pocket that you come across. And overall is not a board that I would hesitate to take out 
on a deeper day or like a full on pow day. I did take this board through some park laps as well. And I gotta say that it is surprisingly freestyle friendly. Still probably better suited for hunting down natural features and doing freestyle stuff around the rest of the resort. But if you do take it through some proper park laps, it's still gonna have a great feel in there as well. It's pretty comfortable riding switch, feels pretty decent on rails and on jumps. Uh, overall, I'd say with the stability you're gonna find in this snowboard and that stiffer flex, it probably is a little bit more jump leaning, uh, but still gonna be a good time for just all around park laps and not a bad choice for freestyle focused riding as well. Overall, I think the Hometown Hero is gonna be a great choice for riders that want something versatile and are gonna explore the entire resort and probably better suited for those of you that have a little bit of experience behind you. This is gonna be a fairly aggressive snowboard and a little bit more situation specific as well, but it's gonna come through with a lot of energy. It's gonna have some nice stability to it. And it's gonna have a good feel pretty much anywhere that you take it. So if you're looking for something like that, consider the Burton Hometown Hero. I'm going to have this snowboard linked down in the description below if you want to read more about it. If you've had a chance to ride this snowboard, let us know what you think about it down in the comments below. You can leave any questions for me down there as well. Drop a like if you got some value. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I appreciate all you guys. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in a new board review next time.